Hey everybody, this is Steve Cook with Premier Guitar and PremierGuitar.com. Today we are looking at the ISP Beta Bass Pedal. It's a lot to kind of get out of the mouth here, but ISP put out a, uh, a preamp a few years back, uh, their Beta Bass preamp, and it's a single rack mount deal. We're not talking about that today. This is the pedal version of that, and see that was kind of unique in the fact that it had a great sounding transparent EQ. It had a really nice compression, and it had this uh, this feature on it that we'll talk about in a moment that they have transferred to this pedal. But now we've got it in a pedal form, and they've got a little bit of added value in the fact that ISP threw in some overdrive. So let us get into the layout of this pedal. It's a little bit daunting because there are a lot of knobs. However, once you line it up and look at it, kind of like a recording console, it's really not that bad. The top line is basically EQ with the exception of a couple things. But we've got the uh, we've got the input right here, which is your input level. Then this is your EQ section. So we've got the low, we've got mids and low mids, low mids and high mids, excuse me, and then they're sweepable. So you've got a really broad range of EQ. And then you've got your treble and your high end. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It's an EQ and it sounds great. Then we will move down here to this row, which is sort of the, uh, the nuts and bolts. It gets a little crazy. So we've got compression which is what they were famous for before, and, uh, and they are famous for yet again. And, uh, and of course, the top of the piece, you saw I didn't change anything. We've got the compressor on here. We've also got this little section right here, which is called the exciter. It's sort of like an Arl exciter in the fact that it will boost certain frequencies. And what you can do is you can mix in as much of that as you want, and then you can also blend in frequencies that you like. So we've got that section set up right here. And right here is the decimator noise reduction system. Now if you have noisy pedals or noisy things going on, um, then this is this is there to combat all of that. And uh, the only thing we have running right now is this very quiet bass into this. So you're not going to hear a lot of that because I didn't bring noisy things to, uh, to demo that. However, if you did have problems, this is where you would start. So uh, then we've got this fun section over here, and this is the distortion section. And we've got the gain and we've got the mix. And so when you have the gain in the mix, uh, just like many things, um, you've got, well, pretty self-explanatory, how much distortion you're going to put on there, and then the blend between the original signal and the distorted tone. Um, on the back panel, it's an in, it's an out. This is the XLR up here. And then this does have a wall wart with it, and it's about a pound and a half. It's pretty substantial. Uh, so it doesn't uni use a universal power supply, so keep that in mind if you're putting this on your board or, uh, or putting this in your home. Just make sure you have space for that. So now let's talk about some of the features on this, uh, starting with the EQ. Um, I didn't touch anything from the top section, and it was a nice, warm, uh, very, it's a P-bass, so very P-bass sounding, but really nice signal. But I have it intentionally dark because I want to show you the range of the uh, of some of these controls. So let's boost the treble up to 12 o'clock. And on a side note, these are actually boosts and cuts. So I was cutting out some of the treble. It wasn't a, now I'll be boosting it. It doesn't get crazy with it. it doesn't make it unusable especially as high as that is set so let's uh, roll back on some of this here back to even and then we're gonna sweep some of these mids so low mid obviously beefs it up a little bit And let's get into that throaty mid-range thing. Pretty cool. So I'm going to take the compressor off so you can hear kind of what that does. Right now, signal's not going to change. And now let's pop it back on. And 
you can hear how it's choking at the top. As we pull that compressor up, it's obviously going to choke the signal a lot more. But I like it opened up a little bit. So the next section is the exciter section. We've got the exciter uh, mix. We've got the exciter EQ. So dial in whatever you want. I mean, basically the, the best way to use this, in my humble opinion, is to find your tone up top. You can hear how it's a little bit darker now. Brighten it up just a hair. Pretty good tone. Uh, we'll just roll with that. And now I'm going to pop on the exciter. So you find your good tone, then you pop on the exciter and it makes certain harmonic frequencies pop. So you hear how there's a little bit more brilliance, a little bit more sheen. It sort of rounds out the bass tone and makes it sound a lot nicer. can move it in a different territory. I can live with that. Very nice. So that's a pretty cool feature in itself. Again, all foot switchable. And uh, of course, I would be using this on the floor, but I have to have this propped up for you at home to see. And then the next section is super fun. This is the distortion section. So right now, these are both at 12 o'clock. I'm just going to smack it on here. Pretty powerful, pretty fun. Again, this is the original signal, and I'm going to go ahead, this is the mix, I'm going to blend this in. Now that's full bore, no original bass signal. Just want if you just want a little bit of dirt pretty cool to dial in you don't have to have external pedals for that and again this also works with the preamp section so if there's a, a frequency in there you like or don't like go ahead and add it or take it away fun you know isp has uh has worked very hard to put this together in the the di pedal format uh bringing it from you know the one space deal and this it adds portability you know for if you just have a studio board for example and you just have a few favorite effects um, this is a great piece to have on that board as your di because you have a lot of flexibility with the eq you've got uh, the compressor already built in that you can dial in and tweak um, the Arl Exciter just makes everything pop. And then again, you can tweak that within, you know, it's, it's parameters to, to help you find your way in the mix, you know, in a live situation too. It's not just a studio piece. So you've got a lot of power at your fingertips to find your place in the mix. And then to have the onboard, well, let's just talk about this for a second. You've got the onboard compression, onboard exciter, and then you've got an onboard overdrive slash distortion unit. So depending on quality and brand, you're saving yourself a lot of money by having these three effects on board. And again, that can be tweaked with this really nice uh, transparent EQ section at the top. You are saving yourself a lot of cash by having all this built in. And it doesn't take up that much real estate on your pedal board. I mean, it's basically the size of two floor, tun floor tuners. So you're really not giving up or you're sacrificing that much real estate. So that's kind of a nice thing too. So if you have a chance to check one of these out in person, please do because I think you'll find that uh, it's a really useful piece, kind of a Swiss Army knife, uh, but it has some really high-end features that will be great on stage or in the studio. For Premier Guitar, PremierGuitar.com, this is Steve Cook. Thanks so much for checking out this review demo. Make sure you check out all of our review demos that are on our YouTube page. What? There's a YouTube channel? 
YouTube page? You can subscribe to it? Yes, you can. Click on that, subscribe, watch all the rig rundowns, the how-tos, more review demos to your heart's content in your relentless pursuit of tone because we love guitars and basses too. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.